chapter on what has been related about the subsistence of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas said, I was among the first men who spilled blood in Allah's cause, and I was among the first men to shoot an arrow in Allah's cause. I saw battles with troops of the companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him. We had nothing to eat except leaves of trees and al hubla such that one of us would leave droppings like the droppings of sheep and camels. Now, Bani Asad have appeared wanting to instruct me in religion. Then, I would be a loser and have wasted my efforts. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote Hubla is the fruit of an anasha which resembles a legume. Sa'ad bin Malik said, I was the first man among the Arabs to shoot an arrow in Allah's cause. I saw that we battled along with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and there was no food for us but al-hubla and this samur, such that one of us would leave droppings like the droppings of a sheep. Then Banu Asad appeared wanting to instruct me in religion. I would be a loser and have wasted my efforts. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote Samur is a type of acacia. See Tuhfat al ahwaldi and An-Nihaya. Comments Sa'ad, may Allah be pleased with him, was the governor of Al-Kufa during the Caliphate of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. During that period, the people of the tribe of Banu Asad raised complaints against him to the Caliph. One of the complaints was that he, Sa'ad, did not know how to lead the Salah. The word Deen used in the Hadith by the companion is a metnam for Salah. By this he means to say that if, despite being among the earliest converts to Islam, he has not even learned how to perform Salah, for which he needs instruction from such people, then he is surely a loser. In fact, the complaint against him was a pure fabrication that had no relation with truth. Muhammad bin Sirin said, We were with Abu Huraira and he was wearing two linen garments, dyed with red ochre. He blew his nose in one of them and said, Excellent. Abu Huraira blows his nose in linens. I saw a time when I would pass out between the minbar of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and the dwelling of Aisha from overwhelming hunger. Someone came and placed his foot on my neck, thinking that I was a madman, but I was not crazy, it was nothing but hunger. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments During the period of the rightly guided caliphs, military conquests brought abundant wealth, and people were able to live in nice houses and wear fine clothes. They even blew their noses in fine pieces of cloth. This change of fortunes astonished Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. Fadala bin Ubaid narrated that when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would lead the people in Salah, some men would collapse among them during the Salah due to hunger. They were among Ashab al Sufa, such that a Bedouin would say, These people are mad or possessed. So when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, finished the Salah, he turned to them and said, If you knew what was in store for you with Allah, then you would love to be increased in poverty and need. Fadala said, And on that day, I was with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments Ashab as sufa literally people of the bench, were poor Muslims who, keen as they were to learn the teachings of Islam from the Prophet, peace be upon him, had taken the Prophet's masjid as their adobe. They often had nothing to eat which was the cause of their passing out during the congregational salah, so that the newcomers among the Bedouin, unaware of their situation, took them to be crazy people because of their apparent condition. In contrast to this devotional attitude of the companions, the students of today enjoy much greater facilities but suffer from lack of interest and keenness to acquire religious knowledge. Abu Huraira narrated, the Prophet, peace be upon him, went out during an hour in which he would normally not go out, nor meet with anyone. Then Abu Bakr came to him, so he said, What brought you, O Abu Bakr? He said, I came to meet the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and to look at his face, and to make sure he was safe. It was not long before Umar came. He said, What has brought you, O Umar? He said, Hunger, O Messenger of Allah. He said, I also experienced some of that. So they went to the home of Abu al-Haytham al-Tayyihan al-Ansari. He was a man with many date palms and sheep, but he had no servants, so they did not find him there. They said to his wife, Where is your companion? She said, He has gone to fetch us some good water. 
It was not long before Abu al-Haytham came along hauling a large water skin which he put down. Then he came to hug the Prophet peace be upon him and uttered that his father and mother should be ransomed for him. Then they went to a grove of his and he spread out a mat for them. Then he went to a date palm and returned with a cluster of dates which he put down. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Why don't you select some ripe dates for us? He said, O Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I wanted you to select from the ripe dates and the unripe dates. So they ate and they drank from that water. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, this is among the favors which you shall be asked about on the day of judgment. Cool shade, tasty ripe dates, and cool water. Abu al-Haytham left to prepare some food for them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Do not slaughter one with milk. So he slaughtered a small female or male goat and brought it to them so they could eat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Do you have any servants? He said, No. So he said, Then if we get some captives, we shall bring them for you. So later, the Prophet, peace be upon him, came with two males. There was no third among them. And he brought them to Abu al-Haytham. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Choose from them. He said, O Prophet of Allah, choose for me. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, the one consulted is entrusted. Take this one, for I have seen him praying, and encourage him to do well. So Abu al-Haytham went to his wife and informed her of what the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. So his wife said, You will not fulfill what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, until you have freed him. So he said, He is free. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, Allah has not sent a Prophet, nor made a Khalifa, except that he has two groups of supporters, a group ordering him to do good and prohibiting him from evil, and a group that never ceases spoiling his affairs. So whoever protects himself against the evil supporters, then he shall be protected. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Footnote Regarding this hadith, its basis is recorded by Al-Bukhari, who narrated it here to at tirmidhi and is also recorded by Muslim and others. Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went out one day accompanied by Abu Bakr and Umar and he mentioned similar to the hadith 2369 in meaning but he did not mention from Abu Huraira in it. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Comments Cool shade, fresh fruit and cool water are great bounties of Allah. Anyone who is fortunate enough to get these must pay his thanks to Allah. Sincerely offered Salah inculcates in man a sense of responsibility and strength to do his tasks. A good wife is a dependable companion that always gives her husband wise counsel. No one should, however, do the bidding of a wife prone to giving bad counsel for she is a bad companion whose counsel is not worth implementing. Anas bin Malik narrated from Abu Talha who said, We complained to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, of hunger and we raised our garments from our stomachs, exposing a stone on each of us. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, raised his garment exposing two stones. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Footnote They would strap stones to their stomachs due to severe hunger since it would help alleviate the suffering. Comments Stones of right size, if put on stomachs and firmed up with straps, have, thanks to their cool temperature, the effect of alleviating the heat generated by hunger as well as of keeping straight the backs of the people. Simak bin Harb said, I heard a Nu'man bin Bashir saying, Do you people not have what you wish of food and drink? I have seen your prophet, and he did not have even enough taqal to fill his stomach. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, taqal means dried out inferior dates. See, Tuhfat al-Ahwadi.